YouTube. It goes on YouTube. Thank you for joining. Mm, wonderful symmetry here. I invite high energies to play with us, help us, inspire us. It's holistic, uh, holistic uh, self-healing for anxiety and depression. I will start with um, a little bit of um, kind of introduction, and then we'll, I will invite discussion. So prepare, remember what I'm speaking, and bring up the questions. There is no specific plan. There is some plan, but not very specific. So, depression is, I don't think it is very unusual. I think if if person is not depressed, there is something wrong with them. I think it's very normal to be somewhat depressed. Clinical depression, I guess, is worse when you really cannot function, but, but otherwise, it's a, a part of life. And it comes from fear. There is a nice saying, Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu said that, if you are depressed, you live in the past. If you are anxious, you live in the future. So that's, that's the answer, basically. Um, look for pain in the past to solve your depression. And look for fear in the future to solve your anxiety. Understand that depression as death is just normal part of life. If you remember, Forrest Gump repeated that. Death is just part of life. So to heal the depression truly, you have to accept the fear of death and deal with it. Just accepting death, accepting sadness, accepting depression is the only way. No, it's not the only way. It's the most efficient way of getting used to that and getting over it. Bashar says, depression is compression. It's a natural par part of the cycle. You expand and you contract. Depression is just a state when your soul is contracting and then you expand again and contract again. So if there is sadness, some would define depression as malignant sadness, something which is bigger than you can handle. That would be one of the definitions. If, if that sadness is bigger than you can handle, that's depression. If you feel that that black wave comes to you, one of the simplest things to do is just say whatever. The mantra is whatever. The mantra is whatever. I accept that. I accept that. And when you accept it, it's the first step for healing. Acceptance to, of any, any problem, any trouble, any sadness. Accept it first. Recognize that it is there. Recognize that it is here. Notice it. It's not something... mysterious anymore when you define it. It's not mysterious anymore. It's sadness, you know, oh, it's coming, okay. And then you kind of step a little bit aside. So there is part of you which is in pain. Depression is pain of the soul, but which is part, part of you which is still keeping the fire. Energy-wise, yeah, depression is pain of the soul, and there is aura, and usually in depressed person, the aura is in pain. There is a hole somewhere, sometimes, often, and energy, instead of coming in and coming out one way, coming in and coming out another way, it's leaking somewhere where it shouldn't, and that's pain. So the healer, when it heals, when the healer heals 
that sort of aura trauma kind of tries to close this hole, put a healing energy, put a healing patch of energy on, on the trauma. It feels different when you sense the energy, when a Reiki practitioner senses the energy, there is pull, you want to put your hands there and you feel like energy just flows there. That's a usual sign that there is some tra 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 trauma there, energetic trauma, and you heal it. You kind of close it, and when it the the energy flow subsides, you know that's you know that's you, you you can stop and kind of close. There is even special kind of way of closing that that trauma. Another way of dealing with that would be recognize the trauma, recognize what came to you, what was the pain, what was the experience which brought the pain, what was the spiritual pain that you experienced in the past, why did it come here, and release it. So releasing is, again, accepting first. When accepted, yes, I see it, I accept it, I forgive it, self, I accept myself, I made a mistake maybe, and I forgive myself for making a mistake. I was harmed, and I forgive that. I forgive someone who harmed, I forgive someone that harmed, and forgive that. So the way to release dark energy which is there, it's usually a vortex. It's a vortex which is abnormal, which blocks your normal energy flow. To release that vortex of dark, dark energy, you have to forgive. And often it's, you, start to have to start, you have to start to forgive from forgiving yourself. There are many ways of dealing with dark energy which comes to you. One is, before it comes to you, one is to protect yourself. So it's like safety precautions. Before going into a certain area, dealing with certain people, with certain situations, cover yourself, people say, with white light, cover yourself with silver light, cover, uh, cover yourself with a energy shield, an energy shield which would protect you. It's not something that I do, but more many people do often. To me, it's more natural to become transparent. Whatever comes my way just flows through. It's not mine. Yesterday, a message to me came, which just was perfect for today. It says, don't take what is not yours. If you took it, put it back. You drive on the street, you see negativity, you experience negativity, or you listen to television, you experience negativity. Don't take it on yourself. Usually we store negative information, like suffering, pain of others, which comes from the media. We store it in fat. The negative energy is combined with food, and it's stored in fat. You accumulate it. So one of their keys to losing weight is releasing that negative energy and not taking it anymore. Filter what you watch, filter what you listen. They give you wonderful stuff mixed with terrible stuff. And it feels great when you take it, but then it's stored in you and it blocks the energy flows. So releasing the darkness is is natural for everybody. You already know how to do that. You already do that every day. You release it with breath, with cough, with sneezing, with all secretions, with voice, with words, with singing, with any expression, you release it. Dancing, if you're in pain, dance. If you're in pain, dance. You didn't release it. One of the classical energy healing, holistic healing, tools is cough it out, just force it out, <coughs> cough it out like that, especially first imagine it, imagine it, give it a form, a shape, and then cough it out. Once my close friend, uh, was uh, he, he, he does mediumship, which is called channeling, he invites 
friendly spirits to speak through him. And once it was a negative spirit that came, and it started cursing, and I was there, it started cursing, and it was very unpleasant, and it spoke on some ancient language, which sounded a little bit like maybe some of the Middle Eastern languages, but I, it was unrecognizable. And I didn't know what to do with that. I, what can you do with that? Uh, so I asked him, I said, I don't understand that language. Can you speak English? You know, I'm, I, I'm your friend. Please explain what's happening. Finally, after a few minutes, he switched to English because Jim knows English, so he was able to say he's an extraterrestrial entity which was stuck on Earth and he died and he doesn't know where to go and he is in, in anger for a long period of time. What could I do? Yes. Uh, and he was still angry. And I have my music instrument, a tank drum. So I thought, mm. I said, I will play music for you. I mean, that was one of the gestures I usually do. I mean, it's easy. You just play. So I played something soothing on the drum. And Jim started coughing, and, and the entity left. And Jim said, he said that, oh, actually, he said it first to me. The entity said it first to me. You remind me something from the past which I forgot, something kind and loving. And then he said to Jim, cough me out. So uh, that thing in Bible when they say that the life comes with the breath, it also reminds me of that. So coughing out is very natural for coughing out negative energies. When somebody starts coughing out of the sudden, one thing it massages the heart. Cough massages the heart. If you have pain in the heart, like heart attack, it's recommended that you just start coughing because it massages the heart. And second, it just sends the bad energies out, especially if you do it intentionally. And there is many other ways to, to release negativity. And you take it on yourself. You take as much as, usually you do the work, and especially the healing work. And when you speak to people, you take their suffering on yourself. You might. You don't have to, but you might. And you might do it intentionally if you know you can get it out. So you take it, trash it. And sometimes you transform it, transform it to something beautiful and better. So part of what we do in this life, we transform negative to positive, especially light workers. Hmm. I think it's time for you to speak if you want. Do you want to comment on anything? Ask, share. I think your presentation is brilliant. Thank you. I quarrel with you a couple of things. Yes. And question you about one. I, I think I am left unimpressed with the concept of forgiveness as a healing quality. Uh huh. Uh, I think it's to be expected, um, but an empty word. Uh huh. I also would for with you about how you, it's a very Buddhist way of looking at pain in the world, and to shelter ourselves from that is to me very Buddhist. But another way of looking at the pain in the world is to be called upon to respond to it in some loving way. So that the trick to me would be how you do that without keeping all that pain inside. Yeah, that's a lifelong exercise. Yes. There is no single answer. I guess the third comment uh, I would make about your presentation is that you did not mention the healing qualities of anger. Ah. And. Um, I sort of sometimes wonder about forgiveness and anger and how we overemphasize one and not give due respect to the other. 
Thank you. Having said that, I think your presentation was very good. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, so far I just kind of juggle with different tools you can use and you pick and choose. You can you choose forgiveness, you can choose anger. As long as you remember that it's a choice, it is a choice what you use, it's a tool. If you use anger as a tool, great. If you become, if anger uses you as a tool, <laughs> Yeah, if you become a tool of anger, then it's a little different. Usually solving that would help. It would help to ask per the person what's your zodiac sign. And for each zodiac sign, it's, there is favorite emotional movement. Like for Pisces, it would be a movement of a general first, fighting, being in control, being in command and then self-sacrifice, and then just, how do you call it, diving in and disappearing from their reality. And then diving out and, hello, what happened? Just refreshed. That would be a typical movement of the Pisces. For, for Sagittarius, oh, anger is absolutely healing. It's natural. They are kind of, Little kings, big kings, mm, rulers, and anger for them is just natural. That's what they do. Being angry and then be laughing and being generous, that's Sagittarius. As Aquarius, I don't really know what anger is. For me, anger is more like uh, panic. When I'm angry, I'm panicking. That's my anger. <laughs> And it's not healing for sure. Panic is not healing. Yeah, so yeah. You were speaking about other things. Uh, forgiveness and acceptance. Yeah. And here is the thought which is with me last few days. Okay, we start with the saying that it's not that the human has a soul. It is that the soul has a human experience. That... That is our starting point, usually. We know about the soul. We know that we come here, incarnate here. And the soul is basically a leaf or a berry on the tree of life. We all are related. We all are hanging berries on this tree of life, like vortexes. Each one of us has a unique style, a unique, unique emotional signature, unique melody of life. And we come here for different incarnations, but different incarnations could be male, female, different races, different continents, but they all have that signature. They all are very similar in the way they behave. So, so we will, we would, if we met ourselves in a different incarnation, we would recognize a related person even of different color. That's what I learned from speaking to higher people, spirits from uh, different dimensions and spiritual world through, through channelers. So, the thought that came to me was that God comes here through us and gains experience. And God as a creator, the creator of this world, comes here and feels everything, gets that experience, and gets the pain and the joy and love and anger. And it's our choice to either play our own game or maybe play God's game, helping the God to experience. And when I experience something, I'm thinking, hmm, what would that creator do if the creator was in my body in that situation? And it changes the posture right away. Oh, I'm God here experiencing that. I still have to experience that anger, that pain, that depression. I, kind of, I don't hold onto it, onto it. I pass it, pass it up. 
Yeah, that's, you know, that's how it feels. Oh, you want me to go deeper? All right. It's, it becomes a game. I mean, it's still a risky game. There is still death. There is still pain. But, but if you pass it on, that, that is a completely different experience. Not completely, somewhat different experience. There is a different perspective on the same thing. Perspective. perspective. So, forgiveness, hmm. accepting. Hmm. Accepting negative stuff doesn't mean that you have to take it. Accepting negative stuff means that you just regain the balance. That's what I define as acceptance. All right, I'm here and now. That is what it is. That is acceptance. Just saying, all right, I'm hurt. That's pain. I'm so not accepting meaning you're still moving. You're still being pushed back or pushed forward. You're, you're out of balance. If you say, oh, that's where I am flying down and it hurts. Just recognizing, recognizing. So basically, there are different ways of accepting, but one is just mental, just recognizing, accepting the fact as a first way of analyzing it. Then there is emotional acceptance. Instead of being emotionally attached to it, saying, no, I'm now in emotional balance. And that is very healing. All right, I'm sick, but I'm in emotional balance. I accept whatever. I am above that. I am beyond the pain. Separating yourself from the pain, it's not me in pain, I'm above that. That is very healing. Now, what do you do about that? That's very different. You might take Tylenol, Ibuprofen, you know. Uh, if it's a back pain, I have a very good recipe, write it down. If you have back pain, sudden, I usually it accumulates and it kind of, you know how it comes. It comes from being out of balance, then kind of concentrating and then it ends up there. It's negative energy just getting there and stuck in there, being stuck there. The recipe is delegate. Say, oh, I'm sick. Oh, I'm sick. I, I can't make it. As soon as you said it out, a few minutes later, oh, where is it? It's gone. Because it's the load on your shoulders, it's load of responsibility. If you, if you accept that you are not capable of moving forward, not capable of performing, how do you say, obligations, uh, it's your duty to tell others you can't make it. And as soon as you say you can't make it, oh, it's easier, it's not anymore that much weight on my shoulders. And if you even take time to recover, it's, it's a, usually a quick recovery. It could be a couple of days and you're back to, I mean, it depends what it is, but, but often it is, if it's just the beginning of something, it's not chronic, if it's something which just came out of a sudden, usually that, that's an easy path out. Diet, interesting diet, Eastern healing foods like garlic, cayenne, help with, black, with uh, back pain. Ah, so yes, um, it's, Converting negative emotion of anger and fear into the blockage which is independent of your emotion. I block that pain. I don't take that pain anymore. I choose not to take that pain anymore. It's just a tool, but it's really helpful when you say, I learned that lesson. I'm not going that path anymore. That person cannot hurt me anymore because to hurt me, I have to accept that pain. If I don't accept it, I'm out of this game. Yeah, whatever, whatever. I love you anyway. I don't play your game, but I accept it in a way that I recognize it. And I chose to build a protection here. And sometimes it's just transparent protection. It's just not mine. I don't take it. Yeah. So, yeah, there are many ways of acceptance and forgiveness. Forgiving doesn't mean that, you know, playing alone. Forgiving, forgiving within doesn't mean you have to uh, let that negativity happen longer. It's like 
very often I say, you know, you don't get really upset about evening coming every, every, every day or night coming every day. You get used to that. It's like there was a storm yesterday and, you know, you didn't, wasn't very emotional about being hurt by that storm because you didn't take it personally. It's something outside of your control, so why to worry about something which is outside of your control? Yeah, basically we are here to make choices. It's still our choices. God is experiencing, but we are making choices. So one of the ways out of depression is to choose, choose happiness. And it could be toughest choice because when you are in pain and emotional pain and spiritual pain, choosing happiness is just illogical, doesn't make any sense. Bashar says, life is like a mirror. If you are sad, you look in the mirror, the, everything, the world around you is sad and negative. You have to smile first and the world would reflect to you. First, you, you choose to smile and it, it could be, it should be, it might be, it's your choice, but it could be a conscious choice to smile when you're in pain. And when you smile, choose to smile, choose to remain happy no matter what, whatever, I'm still happy on some level. The life will reflect. Fake it until you make it, someone said to me. Yeah, fake it until you make it. Um, that's one of the tools, but I, I, I would say it's one of the most efficient ones. Uh, one of the lessons where, okay, oh, there is a big topic of lessons, but I guess I want to invite you to speak if first, if you want. Um, I just had a question about, you said, you know, taking on other people's stuff. Yes. Um, is there a way that you can get rid of it? You know, I have a hard time identifying sometimes if I'm picking up from someone else or if it's something in myself that's been triggered by like just knowing which is which. Uh -huh. Is the way to get rid of it the same? Like, to make it regardless of whether it's yours or someone else's? I don't fully understand the question. So someone is giving you some negativity, right? Well, yeah, like we talked earlier today about being empath. Like I told yes. you so empathically, you pick up somebody else's pain, right? Yeah, and I'm not very good at determining if it's mine or not. And you're not very good at determining if it's not your, yours or not. Yes, that's the answer. Determining, yeah, that's a lifelong skill to determine what is you and what is not. Once I spoke to John Lennon through a medium. Not, not once, several times. For him, the topic of being himself was most central. He wanted to be himself. He was tired of being lifelong celebrity for others. When they think he should be one thing, they drag him you know, through stadi you know, stadiums, performances, it wasn't his choice. He was playing alone because, because that was the best thing he could do at the moment. But later he was wanted to find himself and to find his own way of expression. And for him, like the, when asked for the blessing to others, he said, find yourself, try to find yourself, be yourself, express yourself. There is nothing more important in your life than expressing your own uh, inner identity, inner vibration. And I guess that would be the topic for anxiety. Like really, why do we run as slaves of the schedule, right? How do we tell apart what is us and what is not us? It's a li lifelong exercise, but that's choosing, yes. You juggle the balls, and there is too many of them, and some of them you start dropping, and how to choose which ones you keep and you know, which ones are more dear to you. It's like today, it was a lesson for me. I had too many things on my schedule. I just felt, Overwhelmed, yeah, you feel overwhelmed. 
especially here in Chicago, it's overwhelming. There is so many opportunities. How do you choose what is good and how do you choose what not to take? And it's really important to be consciously choosing. Even if you made the wrong choice, you still feel responsible for making this choice. And then, then in afterlife, you have a luxury of coming back to that situation and relieve the all branching points where you made other choices. And you relieve it from your own perspective and from perspective of other people in the same relationship. So that's how it works. The soul comes here, experiences it. And even if you made a mistake, it doesn't really matter. It's important that you were in that situation. And then later, you can have all, all sides of that. So choosing, yes. I guess the, one of the main prescriptions for anxiety is to choose. And one of the prescriptions is to empty your schedule. Find lots of time, just block that block time for yourself. Many people are afraid to remain alone, lonely with themselves. Some people are very fine with that, very comfortable, but that would be exceptions. In modern Western world, and even modern Eastern world, you run like how do you say in Russian it is a squirrel in a running wheel, right? Is it the same expression here? <laughs> Hamster, yeah. Hamster in a running wheel. And um, understand that all your previous incarnations didn't have that. Most of them. That was a different world. And your spirit guides, usually they, they didn't live this life. They didn't live in modern world. We are the first one who live in that craziness of time pressure and opportunities. They can give you advice, they can help you, but you're the first one who really play in that, that game of, I don't know if you notice, but every 10 years, especially last 10 years, the time speeds up. The commercials are becoming faster, the movies have so much packed in them. If you just watch the movie from 40 years ago, oh, it is so slow. And if you just remember, if I remember my life, 40 years ago, even 25 years ago. I was bored, I didn't have anything to do. There was nothing to do. I remember most of the trouble was what to do. We were reading books in, in Subway and meeting, but the life was so slow and you were in a calling booth and you have a, your little notebook and you call one friend and call another friend and call another friend and spend like two hours calling trying to find someone who would spend time with you. <laughs> now it's very different, right? <laughs> it's very different. Um, ascension, I guess. Everything is, becomes, gets a different perspective when you think about ascension. Uh, there is a, a lot of misconception or different opinions what ascension is. Everybody agrees that humanity goes into the new level, evolutional level. There is huge change. You can see that on the graphs, you know, just the graphs on internet, you know, things change. We speed up. So what is ascension? My friends from other side explain that ascension is a change, a positive change, and many civilizations, many extraterrestrial civilizations made it. And it's very typical. But for, on, for Earth it would be a little different, but ascension is uniting in a telepathic way. That's the simple answer. Uniting in a telepathic way. And for Earth they predict it will take several generations. So our generation is hopeless. At least my generation is, you know, there are some telepaths, there is tons of empaths, but, but we are not that united. We are certainly now united through, how do you call them? Mass collective 
Facebook, there is a collective name for that, Facebook, social media. We are now becoming connected through social media, which is electronic, basically. But the future for, positive future for humanity, if we make it, is to reunite through telepathy. And our children, our grandchildren, become more and more telepathic. And it takes several generations just to develop not only the ability which we all in, um, genetically have, it's develop their schooling, their way to teach people, the way to the language of communication. So we are not there yet. We are closing ourselves because there is so much negativity first and there is so much deception second. I mean, deception is everywhere. Yeah, deception is so common. Yeah. How are you? I'm great. It's deception, right? Because, you know. <laughs> right. So, um, uh, am I fight? No, no, no. It's not a deception, right? <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so uh, ascension is, is coming. It's coming through several generations, hopefully two, three, four. Maybe, maybe some of, our, of us or some of our children would, would see it happening. And what it gives humanity, it gives coherence, basically. It stops the wars, stops the counterproductive things. People really start thinking together. Now there is some thinking together. Like yesterday, congratulations, Chicago. Some of your sports teams made some progress. And there was celebration in the air. Everybody was happy. I don't know what was that. But, but it feels like people unite for good reasons, at least for neutral. I think it's vain. It's a good word, vain. But still, it's, it's not negative. Much worse is to unite for negative reasons, like Nazism or, or what's that word? I forgot the word. It's even not in my vocabulary. Revenge. Yeah, uniting for revenge. Yeah, revenge is you know, very uniting. Ah, any more comments? I have a comment, but it was back about kind of depression. Yes. Is that, is that okay? And it was about forgiveness and actually, um, and about acceptance and kind of accepting pain or experience or the actions of someone else, accepting that and kind of like the permanency of it and whether you know you accept something or forgive something or someone once and that's kind of the assumption that then it'll be gone and you've let it go and it's gone now but you know so then when it comes back is that really a sign that you never truly accepted it forgive it or is this another layer or is this another wave of something so just like kind of question about that about thank the occurrence you of yeah thank you yes pain. Yes. Yeah, I, there are many ways to look at the same tool, right? It's just a tool. Yeah, acceptance is just one of the first steps. You accept and then you do something about it. You don't accept and stay there. You accept and do something about it. Accept just to stop being hurt. So you're hurt and acceptance is, all right, I choose to be in balance. Even if it's balance moving down. If it's balance falling down, I still I'm choose to be in balance because otherwise there is no way to recover. You have to, if you are out of balance, I mean, the only way is to fall, keep falling. But if you regain balance by falling, you kind of swim up and come up. There are many tools. The key tool is to change. Oh, yeah. One thing, if, yes, I mentioned, people really hate many people, especially the ones who were caught into the cycle and didn't find a way out of the cycle yet. They, they are hate to be with themselves. People are afraid to be lonely because if you start looking inside, there is so much fear and negativity which is kind of blocked, but, but barely blocked. So when you start looking inside, when you reunite your mind, so much pain comes up. Like people listen to good music and start crying because music integrates you. We are fragmented. We are by design. We are fragmented. Our mind is fragmented. 
One time we are one role, another time we are another role. Uh, if we are in presence of police officer, we are tough. If we are in presence of someone we trust, we are gentle. So there is a lot of, in the soul, in the mind, there is a lot of contradictory personalities of ours. When you try to integrate it into one, it's a lot of work. And that work is done through daily, what's it word? Daily? Contemplation, that's the word, contemplation. So prescription is daily contemplation, really looking inside what I am now and then how do I want to change. That's the second thing which is so foreign to us, to many of us. So like today, like a normal healer would, would ask, in which way do you want to change today? Oh, no, 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 I don't want to change. I want to be back to myself. I don't want to change, right? But the true path is to change every day. True path to healing, to out of depression, is to change. The soul comes here with a contract. It's a very loose contract, but there are some items like unfair relationship or something like that. Or unfair working relationship. You have to become tough. Like, you know, on this part of the 10 years of life, you will be hired by bossy bosses who would be bad to you, unfair to you, until you become tough. And then when you are tough, you have another assignment, for example. That would be a very usual one. So, until you become tough, you don't have a way out of this assignment. That lesson is, get enough pain, so this vortex, is healed vortexes of pain become your spiritual skeleton, and then you spiritually become much more strong and tough. You still pass the energy through, but you have something inside you to move forward, something inside you, a stepping stone, so you can move up. So we come here for spiritual growth, and it starts from the root chakra. Uh, the baby has very strong root chakra, which is survival. It's the main dominant thing for the baby, just survival. Then a year later, it's sacral chakra. It is communication, just hugging, communicating with the mother, with the parents, you know, other people. Then the solar plexus ch ch chakra is old humanity kind of will, power, I want, that sort of thing five years old. And then the heart chakra is feelings. And in normal Western world, it is there, but it's not very well integrated. So the main lesson for humanity for this period of time, plus minus 50 years, is to integrate heart chakra and become united, all chakras united with the heart. Kind of, the heart has its own mind, the mind has a different mind, reuniting, integrating that. So that's the lesson, lifelong lesson for us. Activate heart chakra and being able to think with the heart. And heart is very telepathic, very empathic. So the answer is to change. Yeah, um, accept is just one of the tools, one of the steps. But then you change, you change your belief systems, you change the, the skills of communicating, you change what you think about that specific person, and then you consciously choose what you want to do with it. Yes. And it's like playing a tune. There is no wrong way to play a tune. You design your own tune and play it, or you grow a plant. You grow a plant of relationship. And that plant might have uh, pickly, how do you call them, spikes. You either get gloves or just Drop it, I guess. <laughs> or learn your lesson. I mean, yeah, lessons are, you are given that lesson. That is, when you look back on your life, you see it so transparently. You are given the lesson until you learn it. And then they stop giving it anymore. 
It just kind of, oh, the new, the new part of life starts, the new breath of life starts, and you get different lessons. So changing yourself, developing a way to deal with it is the answer. Yes. Oh. What do we want to talk about? We have another few minutes to play with that. So, as part of that change, <coughs> I imagine big pieces facing the fears. Say again, facing the fears? Yeah, be, how to be brave, yeah, how to protect. Oh, there are many ways, right? I like the way of learning. Part of us is just, part of our experience is learning experience. Just learn and do your homework. Knowledge is best protection. Yeah, if you understand it from inside out, psh, it's, you're not, not afraid anymore. If you know public speaking inside out, it becomes second nature. Right? Oh, you know, that's part, that part, you know. One of the fears of public speaking is, is unequal exchange of energy. If you have audience which is sucking energy out of you, you just feel pain, you can't speak because they already, oh, you say a few things and psh, you're closed anymore, there is no more energy. So fear play with the energy is you give them, you take, you give the take. And that's a skill to give enough and to be able to take it back. And to be able to take life and energy is another skill, again, lifelong, lifelong skill. Some people are really full of energy because the flow of energy of the universe is huge. It's up to us how to grab it, to become strong and energetic and not to be drained by anything. Some people just, they have unlimited amount of energy. For others, it's like, ah, in the morning I have a little bit and I wasted it and now I'm again I'm on, running on empty tank. Yeah, that's the, one of the main scenes, running on empty tank, right? Fake it until you make it, but you know, how can you fake it on empty tank, right? <laughs> what was the question? Um, so the skill, how to, remind me. Face your fears, yes. Yeah. So, how to be brave? So, for me, being brave is just understanding. If you understand the thing, it's not fear anymore, it's not danger anymore, you just understand it. Like men in black, they're real, people see them. If you understand how they function, they're not that harmful. They're not, you know, they can kill you, but, but it's not their main function. It's not, they're not predators. They are not the ones who are really hunting for you. They are protecting their matrix, the matrix from uh, from things that distort it. Oh, that's another big topic. Everybody watched the movie Matrix, right? You did, right? So it's very profound one. Uh, so the Matrix is our world, yes, and we are the souls that how dive into that reality. And it's very well programmed, so unless you're a hacker, it's really hard to hack it. You are here, and you live by its rules. Neo can, could, could change the, the rules, but you know, for us, changing the rules is it's art, it's art. Like Reiki is one of the easiest way to hack it. The, the world is supposed to be materialistic, made of something very tangible, and Reiki energy, in your fingers, I feel it right now, I know for sure, as a researcher, it's not physical, it's not electromagnetic. How do I know? So I can send it from one hand to another. Do, do, do you have Reiki? Do, do you know? Do you do Reiki? So try to send it the energy from right hand to the left. Uh -huh. like, like, and feel if there is a, any sensation. For me, the sensation would be very weak, like I'm blown. So, it's not always there, it's not always there. And, and it can send it like that, or it can send it like that. There is a flow here and a flow from each finger. And right now it's pretty strong. So play with it and sometimes you can catch it. Even if you haven't taken a class of Reiki, you still can catch it. You can, 
Uh, so sometimes it goes and sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. But if you invite it, usually it, for me it goes pretty well. So, and I can send it from a distance. Now it's kind of weaker from a distance. But you can feel as the flow is as a, what's the word? Curve, at a curve, it kind of moves across your palm. So if it was electromagnetic energy, then moving into the water would change the pattern because electromagnetic moves through the water very different. And we do, when you move the Reiki hands into the water, like you know, on the, in, in the swimming pool or in the, in the lake, the pattern remains the same. I can feel it still. So I, I know it's not, not electromagnetic. It is spiritual. It's etheric. It's etheric. So we have, we have the tools for, um, which kind of remind us about the spiritual part of the, of, the, of the life. Every night we go to sleep and we are on the other side. When I wake up, usually my last thing that I remember from the dream is that I am getting asleep and when I finally get asleep, I'm, I'm waking up here. So very, mu very much reminds me of the, of the matrix. You just kind of, you get to sleep there, you wake up here. Uh, so yeah, we are spiritual. There is a lot of hints here and there. It's really hard to prove it. Like if you want me to prove something that's spiritual, it's really hard, especially to skeptics. There is, there is something in the, in the matrix which prevents us from, from experimentally measuring it. But, but here or there, here or there, there are some, some proofs, some of them, for example, reincarnation is, is uh, the researchers of reincarnation, they really found children who remember the past lives to the large detail, they were able to find these places, the photographs, the families where they lived, reconstruct the, that thing, and there are other things of that sort. So, oh, I moved again from the question. So, how do you protect yourself? Knowledge? Ah, oh, one of the main things is take on yourself a worthy goal. Yeah. Why do you really need that? Like, whatever you want to achieve, why do, why do you really need it? What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of your life? What's the general meaning of life? And the answer is, in this matrix, there is no answer predetermined, it's up to you. There is no even, the scenes are not really there. Many things which are considered to be scenes are not really scenes. I guess in this matrix, the only thing is prohibited that is to, dist dist to damage it. So, and the matrix is protecting itself from being damaged. So if you damage the matrix, if you prevent others from getting their lessons, that's sort of a prohibited thing. Like, you're supposed to take your lesson, so suicide is, is not a good thing because you waste the opportunity to take a lesson. And for others, if, if others are taking a lesson of high level, say grade seven, and you drag them down to grade one, it's also a lesson, but it's different, so it's pretty bad. So helping others, lifting others to better lessons. So you start with lessons level one, and two, and three, and four. So it's, it's, again, it's your choice, but people who do well spiritually raise to higher level lessons. They end, end, end level one, they go to level two. And what's the difference between these levels? Ah. Oh. It's really hard to define. It's vibration, I guess. The energy vibration, it's, it's the main thing. Easiest would be like, there are, again, there are, there are negative people who get high level lessons. They're in control, they're angry, they're dominant, they're hurting others, but they still play with very high level energies. So it is possible to take high level and, uh, lessons being negative. So being good and bad doesn't really mean that you're not progressing spiritually. But it's much easier to progress spiritually when you're choosing kindness, helping others, service to others, and happiness. Again, happiness is a choice. 
and it's a free choice. You, nobody, if you want, if, if you wish to be in your depression, if you wish to be sad, if you wish to be angry, the rules are that you know nobody will. The higher spirit, spiritual help would let you do that. They wouldn't prevent you from following your choice. So, inviting help, inviting spiritual help, praying in a modern way, for example. And praying in the modern way is invitation. I invite higher help. That's it. And then you say, for what? I invite higher help. Invitation is, again, they have free choice, you have free choice. Invitation, you're always entitled to invite. That's your, your birthright. To live and to invite help. Not to beg, not to say, oh, please, please, please. It's humanity before. Modern way is, new age way, light workers way is invite. I invite help. It's your choice, I respect your choice, but I invite. Who can help me today? Healers. My help and healers, please come and wherever you feel the pain in meditation, put your hands and I invite you to work from my hands to heal myself. That would be the, one of the recipes. Especially in, in despair. Life is unfair. The matrix is unfair. It's part of the lesson that, you know, you go down. No matter what, the planets are in retrograde. You go down. Sometimes it is not even related to you. Everything just goes wrong. And you're going down. You're abandoned. Not abandoned, but abandoned. Abandoned. It's hard for me to say. They abandoned you. And, um, and here... You, it's your choice. You, you still can invite help. You still can imagine for yourself a better future. Yesterday it came to me that the message, electronic one, said, anxiety is a wrong use of imagination. Imagine yourself something positive. It's, it, it helps, it really helps to purify yourself. If you are pure, as another protection. If you are pure, bad things just don't stack in you. You don't even notice them if you are pure. If you are positive, you don't even understand what it is. You can, you can be hurt physically, but if you don't understand, it's not part of your lesson. It's not part of your spiritual pain. Some people are so innocent and so trusting that it could be impractical, but they are, are on so much higher level Things go really wrong around, and they don't pick up negative energies just because they are on so high spiritual level. They still serve others. They still have lots of energy. They serve others in the way they can, but they just don't pick up negativity. So purifying yourself is another way to, uh, to not to get hurt, to protect yourself. Purity is great. You don't have to choose it. You can be very complex. You can really uh, play high games, low games, but, but purify. Uh, Forrest Gump is my favorite example. He was so lucky because he was so trusting and pure. He was so pure. It's not that you know, this happens often, but, but you can find this, this kind of people. They're just so pure. They're so nice. They don't even understand the negativity. They just, it's just beyond them. All right. Now, um, do we have anything before we close? I want to do some little meditation. Um, any, any more comments? Yeah, it's really hard to cover everything in uh, one shot, so I want to, I'm sure I want to continue. I have a big list of ideas, like, which goes like 10 times bigger than what I mentioned, but I think I mentioned the main thing. I mentioned ascension. You can choose to help humanity to ascend. You can ascend personally. Personal ascension is going to higher level lessons. That's personal ascension. Uh, you can choose to, yeah, contract can be rewritten. So if you volunteer, say, look, that contract is boring. How about I do that? They consider that. 
if you really get excited about something very positive, they might give you new life. Like you are, feel like your life is you're close to being like to die, and then say, "Oh, wait a second. Here is what I could do another chunk of time." And sometimes they give you just another chance to continue. Your contract is finished. You are supposed to die, but but you can you can rewrite it. It's a time when things are allowed of that sort. Accepting death, I think, is very healing. I mentioned that before, but just accept that you will die. Don't be afraid to die. Dying is returning home. You really have to do your homework to understand that it is true, but dying is returning home. Dying is happiness. We're not dying because we have lessons to learn. Our spirit guides, our higher self are watching us. And they're helping us to move through lessons. That's why we are alive. But you know, it's a due time we will die and just accept it. Don't be afraid. Western culture makes it so negative. But it's, it's part of life, as Forrest Gump was saying. Just accept it and then it's so healing, so much easier to live through. Just, you know, in due time I will die. That's fine. It's like birth, just the other way around. You know, we come here, we leave, you know. Door is open, enter, hello, goodbye, that's it. <laughs> nice way to finish the lecture on depression, right? <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> accept it, yeah, you choose to live, you, you're free, you can choose to live, choose to be happy, choose to invite help, this is the main prescription, choose to change, choose to learn your lesson, do your homework. <laughs> All right, uh, now um, uh, the meditation, I will press the button on the, on the phone and um, if you wish to invite star energies, I didn't speak about star energies yet, but it's what I offer. I speak to my star friends and if you choose to invite their help, they're uh, eager to help. So it's not on camera, so if you like to me to introduce you to my star friend, it will be like a brief introduction. I will put a, my, I would do rake on your head from, from the high. And if you want, that would be kind of an introduction to star energies. And then later you can invite them to help. I, I work with good ones. These are Pleiadians, Yael. Yael are also called tall greys, you know, six foot tall typical aliens, the kind of ones, nice ones, uh, not the bad ones, the bad ones are Zaytis. Um, and then um, Lyrans and Arcturians, it's my friends. Uh, if you wish, you can raise your hand and I will just thank you. Thank you. All right. I will just give you a sewer radio. No star friends. Okay. Thank you. I think I'll pass star friends today. Sure. Sure. All right. Uh, let me do a blessing first and then I will do the music. All right. I bless God with you. I bless God inside you. I bless you on your path. Be strong if you wish. Be vulnerable if you wish. It's part of fun. Vulnerability is very healing. If you choose to be vulnerable, it's very healing. It's very spiritual. It's, it's a way to serve the world by doing little self-sacrifices. You improve the world. You could if you choose to. Invite the energy. Energy is limitless. You hold a part of your soul in your body. The biggest part, the bigger part of your soul cannot fit in your body, cannot experience the lessons because they are of third dimension, third density, low vibration. If you raise your level of experience, if you raise your grade which where you experience in their reality more of the soul can enter into you more energy will be given to you more help will be on your way so 
open yourself, invite more of higher lessons, higher energies to come through, and be diligent and brave working through those lessons, walking through those paths. Again, these are your choices. You choose. You play with opportunities, invite opportunities. When you are feel that God plays through you, more comes to your eyes, more opportunities become visible to you. You haven't, usually they are right in front of you, you're just not noticing them. And next door, right here in your home, somewhere nearby, your closest friend say, oh, I can do that. And that's an opportunity. Yes. Do your homework. Do the negative homework too. If you experience the negativities, experience it. You're above that. You can take it, process it, and make something good out of it. Usually troubles allow for new opportunities. If you get stuck, enjoy that compression. Enjoy that depression. Enjoy that place on the bottom of the curve and gain the inertia and then get yourself out just it's called bootstrapping right just pulling yourself through the straps of your boots right pull yourself up and you will be surprised how easy it is to come back up Leave the old pains behind. Change into a new you. Imagine yourself being a caterpillar converting to a butterfly. You don't have to carry all your old luggage. You keep the notes, the lessons, the check marks, but don't keep the emotional baggage. You can start a new life every day. Keep your promises, though, but be a new person. Be more of yourself. Choose best of your vibration and follow them. Ask for spiritual help. And don't be afraid to be hurt. Ask for help from your friends gently. Offer them the opportunity to help you. Offer other people for the opportunity to help you. And if they reject, don't take it personally. You always are entitled to ask. You are loved, love yourself. And some mistakes just come there by design. Don't blame yourself for mistakes. Keep it behind, shine. Keep it behind, keep the pain behind and shine now. Namaste.